This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and thriller film called Ratter. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A hacker gets access into Emma's personal gadgets, her laptop, her phone, even her gaming console's camera, and starts to watch her daily life. As she starts adjusting to her New York life, the hacker listens in on her every conversation and watches her every action. When Emma falls asleep with her laptop open, the hacker starts to go through her photo gallery and looks at her pictures. While she's studying in the library, a fellow classmate, Michael, walks up to her, fancying her. He asks her out for coffee and although a bit apprehensive, she gives in to his charms. Michael asks for her number two, so she gives it to him, all the while her laptop screen is open, letting the hacker hear her contact information. That night, while Emma does her nails in front of her laptop, the hacker zooms in on her feet and starts to take snapshots. She also gets a mysterious phone call from someone who won't speak, so she assumes it's just her ex-boyfriend. Then, when Emma goes to bed, the hacker continues to take photos of her. The next day, Emma hangs out with her friend, Nicole, and she mentions her ex-boyfriend, who hasn't stopped reaching out to her since their breakup. When she invites Nicole over to her apartment, Emma's laptop suddenly starts malfunctioning and playing music. Although they're a bit confused, they both just brush it off. For dinner, Emma orders takeout for herself, and when she recites her address, the hacker rewinds the clip to hear the location once more. She then goes to take a shower and shaves her legs, and once again, the camera zooms in, and the hacker intently watches her. When Emma goes to sleep, the hacker rewinds the tapes from Emma's daily life, like a clip of her smiling, and watches it repeatedly. One day, Emma receives an anonymous package, and when she checks it, she sees a brand new razor, which is the exact same model that she's been using. Confused, she calls Nicole to ask whether it's just as weird as she thinks that it is, especially since there are no pamphlets or letters inside the box. But in the end, the two again just brush it off, thinking it might just be a subscription package that Emma will be billed for in the future. Then, when she uses it in the bathroom, the hacker takes snapshots of her feet again and watches her put some lotion on. The following day, Emma goes on a date with Michael, and the two grow closer to each other. Unfortunately, they're both unaware that a stranger is watching their every move. One night, Emma's ex-boyfriend calls to check up on her, and the two end up arguing after the guy makes it obvious how bitter he is over their breakup. When Emma goes out the next day, the hacker watches old home videos of Emma on her laptop from when she was younger. Then, when she gets back, she notices that some photos are missing from her gallery, specifically the ones where she's with her ex-boyfriend and Michael. Worried, she takes her laptop to the tech shop, but she's only advised to change her passwords because they didn't really find anything wrong with it. When Emma goes to hang out with Nicole again, she shows her that she's been getting weird text messages from an anonymous number, sending her cryptic messages that say things like, you never told me how you were doing. However, this is no area of concern for Nicole, who tells Emma that she may just be getting messages from someone who got the wrong number, and adds that it happens to her too. Unfortunately, while Emma's busy dancing one night, she fails to notice that the hacker has already managed to guess her new password and checks her messages. At the same time, Emma continues seeing Michael, but she tells him that they should slow down. When Emma goes to sleep one night, a sudden banging on her door startles her. She then goes to check who her visitor is and sees no one through the peephole, so she just locks the chain on her door. The next day, the hacker pings Emma's location through her phone's GPS. At school, a professor offers Emma a wonderful academic opportunity, and while she's happy about it, she thinks that the teacher is flirting with her. One evening, Emma receives an inappropriate video from Michael and gets confused. Then, as if on cue, Nicole calls her, so Emma tells her friend what Michael just did. But as if that's not weird enough, Michael sends her several messages that say that she makes him nervous and that he's been wanting to talk to her for a long time. He also sends Emma a video of her from high school, making her feel uncomfortable. After a conversation with Nicole, Emma quickly calls Michael and demands to know why he sent her those clips and messages but he insists he has no idea what she's talking about. He then says that maybe someone got into his account, remembering that Emma mentioned the other day that she was hacked. Worried, Emma ends the call and makes sure to lock her door. The next day, Michael immediately talks to Emma so that he can straighten things out with her, hoping that she doesn't blame him for what happened. Fortunately, Emma understands his point and says that she's just a bit scared by what's happening. 
Back in her apartment, while Emma's preoccupied in the shower, the hacker goes through her voice messages and deletes a call from her professor, letting her know about a school-related meeting. One evening, Emma gets ready with Nicole for a night of fun outside. With Emma's phone and her bag on the floor, the hacker takes screenshots underneath her dress when she stands over it. Then, as the girls have the time of their lives at the bar, the hacker visits Emma's apartment. Moments later, when Emma gets home, she decides to rest on the couch, not knowing that the hacker is on her balcony. After going out one day, Emma gets home and finds out that her apartment door is unlocked. A bit paranoid, she immediately calls Nicole, worried that someone might have broken into her place. Nicole then tells Emma that maybe she just forgot to lock it before leaving, but Emma isn't really sure. Nicole also offers to stay on the phone with Emma while she checks her apartment for an intruder, taking a knife as she goes upstairs to her storage room, but Emma accidentally drops her phone, making Nicole worry that something has happened to her. Emma then assures her friend that she's fine, feeling like she's just overthinking, since she's been so stressed lately. While Emma is sleeping soundly one night, her stalker quietly walks around her apartment. Then, the next night, Michael comes over with a cat to help Emma take her mind off things. He spends some time with her so that she can relax for a bit, introducing her to Clover, a cat he got from a shelter that Emma can adopt. Emma feels grateful for Michael's concern and company. And, as they end up sleeping together, the hacker catches a glimpse of them through an awkward angle from her phone. One night, Emma locks the chain on her door, yet the stalker easily opens it using a hook attached to a line that he drags across the door to unlock it. Meanwhile, Emma wakes up from her sleep to get a drink from the fridge, clueless about the man standing behind her wall. Then, when she gets back to bed, the stalker goes inside her bedroom and watches her sleep. The next day, while Emma plays with Clover, Michael calls to inform her that he's received a message from someone, warning him to stay away from her. Michael quickly assumes that it's the same person that's been harassing Emma, and with the issue getting bigger and scaring her more, Emma calls the police to report the situation. Unfortunately, due to the fact that there's no immediate threat and no physical harassment happening, the cops don't do anything yet and simply give Emma a number to call once something happens. Feeling paranoid, Emma goes out with Nicole to talk about her situation, but her friend keeps downplaying her worries by saying that the hacker and the stalker might be different people. Nicole also says that maybe the hacker is just some random kid from some other place, and the person who banged on her door might just be a drunk person. She tells Emma not to freak out too much about it, but Emma is still understandably shaken up. Then, when Emma gets home, she sees Clover, her cat, dead. She tries and fails to contact Michael, so she calls her mom instead. Emma tells her about her cat, but her mom says that perhaps the cat was already sick or had some pre-existing conditions since it was taken from the shelter. Emma's already having a mental breakdown because of everything that's been happening to her. Because of that, her mom gets worried and suspects that something else is going on with her. So, Emma finally tells her mom that she feels like someone is stalking her, adding that she didn't inform her or her dad about it because she didn't want them to worry. Contrary to what Emma wants to happen, her mom immediately tells her that they'll be flying over to New York to get her so that they can find a different place for her to stay. The next day, Emma's busy packing her stuff when she receives a call from a blocked number, but when she answers, no one answers at the other end of the line, so Emma concludes that it must be her ex-boyfriend. Distressed about the whole situation, she calls him and accuses him of stalking and pranking her. However, the guy denies the allegation and thinks that Emma's full of herself for thinking that he would do such a thing to her. With paranoia eating her up, she goes to stay at a coffee shop for a while because she feels unsafe in her apartment. She also calls Nicole and asks if she can stay at her place, but because of work troubles, her friend informs her that she'll be home late. She then instructs Emma to just wait in her apartment and she'll pick her up there when she's able to. Back at home, Emma's on a video call with her mom while waiting for Nicole. She says that she can't reach Michael, so she's getting worried. Her mom then comforts her, reminding her that she's finally arriving in New York the next day to be with her. However, as they talk, the power suddenly goes out, making Emma scared. Her mom tries to calm her down, thinking that a fuse might have just blown, but Emma sees a figure in the dark and starts panicking. She moves out of the camera's frame as the man approaches her, prompting her mom to call 911. It isn't long before the man attacks Emma, and as she tries her best to fight off her stalker, her mom struggles to find and give her address to the cops. Unfortunately, when she finally manages to tell the authorities where her daughter lives, the stalker has already taped Emma's mouth and subdued her. The man then looks at the laptop screen, listening to Emma's mother as she begs for him to let Emma go, but he just closes the laptop on her. Later on, the cops arrive at Emma's apartment, but find no signs of her or her stalker. Subscribe to watch more videos like this.
turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out thank you for watching